So hello again, English students out there connected to the greatest website in the history of language learning online. Which website am I talking about? I'm talking about the greatest website in the history of the internet for learning a second language. I'm talking about Verbling.com and I am so happy to be one of the English teachers working for Verbling.com. My name is Jeff Watson. I am Canadian. I come from the Vancouver area and uh, I am here this hour to help some serious English students uh, improve their uh, language, their second language. And I have the special guest for today who has just entered the class, Hamid. Uh, you gave me the idea for the information for the subject of today's hour, so could you please explain what's, what the occasion is? What are we celebrating this hour? We will celebrate uh, from now uh, the seventh of uh, the seventh April uh, World Chemistry Day. Okay, so on Sunday it's going to be World Chemistry Day. And uh, why are you so interested in chemistry? Because my biggest love is chemistry, and uh, my the biggest purpose is uh, consciousness for uh, people to be liked and uh, to be taught uh, chemistry facts because uh, some people are uh, know wrongly something so some people sorry are some people uh, are some people know uh, chemistry something wrongly ah uh, yes okay they have uh, misinformation or yes. in incorrect beliefs about chemistry. All right. Yes. And you want to raise people's awareness of the importance of chemistry. Yes. And I also uh, prepared some surprises for the lesson. <laughs> okay. All right. Great. Excellent. So uh, let, we'll get started on the material as, as quick as possible. Now, some people think that chemicals are dangerous, they're toxic, they're, they're poisoning our environment. What do you think of that? But uh, we know that we must use them. Yes, they are uh, poisonous, they are toxic, but uh, the fact is we must use them. Right. Okay. And, well, we must use them correctly safely. Yes, and uh, nowadays uh, the main uh, interesting thing is uh, green chemistry. Good. Green uh, chemistry? Yes. Uh, we use uh, recycling uh, materials and uh, to uh, reduce uh, environment. To reduce the impact on the environment? Yes. Okay. So All right. uh, I am big fan of uh, green chemistry. I also yeah. uh, uh, I also worked uh, my master uh, term uh, alternative energy uh, sources. So, um, for example, uh, to the gasoline, the petroleum, yes. uh, will run out in near uh, years. So we must focus on. Uh, alternative renewable energy sources. Right. We are going to run out in the near future. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, uh, I want to do a class about the algae, the green algae that grows in water that can um, produce oil. Yes, I know that. Yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, let's work together on that class. 
So okay. Hunnett is a perfect example of a Burbling student who contacted me directly at my Facebook page and gave me an idea for a class. With his help, I found some great material. I prepared the document for this class. It's called C3. I would like everyone to please download that document. Hamit has put the direct link to the document in the Verbling chat box. And I can do a class about a subject that you find interesting. And so that's easy. And so what I'd like to do is just to get going with the material. And so I would like to open up the document. We are going to read about, this is maybe, uh, this, this woman is maybe one of the most, or is this woman may be the most amazing woman in history. <laughs> Her story is incredible. Certainly one of the most amazing women in modern history. And so, great, I'll be back to you, Hamid, uh, for one of your surprises. And so, Ismail, could you please uh, tell us where you're connecting from and read the title of our document? Hello, Jeff. Hello, guys. I am Ismail. I am connecting from Turkey. I live in Ankara, the capital city of Turkey. Okay, great. And could you begin our reading, please? This is the name of the woman that we're going to be talking about. Yes, Maria Sklodowska Kuri. Yeah, and uh, her life. Uh, these dates here, please. 1867-1934. Okay, and here she is working in the laboratory. Okay, and if you could read this for us, please. Maria Sklodowska Kuri, born in Warsaw, Poland, on November 7, 1867, was one of the first women scientists to win worldwide fame, and indeed one of the great scientists of this century. She had degrees in mathematics and physics, winner of two Nobel Prizes for Physics in 1903 and for Chemistry in 1911. She performed pioneering studies with the radium and polonium and contributed profoundly to the understanding of radioactivity. Okay, perfect. Good job. Now, I just wanted to talk about uh, 190. We say 1903. 1903. Yeah, we say it as though it were the letter. Okay? And just that I have always known of her as being Madame Curie. Perhaps the uh, And so, uh, Madame Curie is uh, her French name. And so, uh, so she somewhat changed her name uh, to a French version. And so I want to go over this. Uh, what's the information in this paragraph? It is a, a little bit short summary biography uh, for uh, Marie Curie. And so just to highlight the main points of information, this is her yes. biography. Yeah. For example, uh, she won uh, two Nobel Prizes like okay. this. Yeah, great. And so, but but different areas. Yes, physics, physics. and chemistry. Okay, so two Nobel Prizes, one in physics and one in chemistry. Yes, right? and Jeff, uh, 2011 uh, we, uh, was uh, yes. chemistry uh, 100. Uh, years anniversary. Uh, yes, anniversary uh, honored by uh, Marie Curie. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. And what about her education? Anyone? Please just yeah. turn on your microphone. Yes. She, she had two, she had two degrees. Yes. In mathematics and physics. Okay, and so. She won Nobel Prizes in Physics and Chemistry, and she had a degree in Mathematics as well. Pretty amazing. 
Okay, and what's the significance of polonium? What is radium and polonium? Or sorry, what are? What are radium and polonium, and why is polonium special to her? There are kinds of material, and there are Good. radioactive. Yes, uh, they're radioactive, radioactive elements. Sorry, they're radioactive uh, elements. Yes. And, and what's okay. special about polonium? Because uh, she, she wore, because, she was yes. wearing Poland. Sorry, uh, 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 Amprey, this is great. I love it when everybody is uh, participating. She was born in Poland. In yes. Poland, that's why the, the name of the of the element. Good. So she named the element uh, in honor of her country, Poland. Okay, great. All right. So let's move on. Um, and this is just the beginning of the list of amazing things. Uh, Mario, are you there? Or Mauro? Hello? Yes, hello, Mauro. Where uh, okay, are you? hi. Okay, my name is Mauro. I come from Italy, Naples, South okay, Italy. Sure. Yeah. Could you please read this for us? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it begins with yeah, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps, okay. Perhaps the most famous so all, um, all women, women, all women, chances. Maria. Slow those kind of carry is not not notable for notable. Mm -hmm. notable for her many verses. She was the first to use the term relativity for this phenomenon. She was the first woman in Europe to receive her doctor of shine. In nine, 1903 she became the first woman to win a Nobel Prize for physics. 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 The word jointly awarded to Korea. Her husband Pierre and Harry Becker was for the discovery of relativity. Um, okay. She became the first Pole to receive a Nobel Prize. Okay, great. And so here's just, this is just the beginning. <laughs> okay. And so just to uh, review, uh, let me, sorry, let me help you with the pronunciation of science. Yeah. Sci. Science. Uh, w women science. Science. Yeah, and scientists. I uh, scientists. Okay. Right. Yeah, the beginning of the word there. And so, great. So what are her firsts? Just to, this is, she is perhaps the most famous of all women scientists. Number one of all history. So why? Um, and and she, any uh, of the students yeah. can participate here, but, but go ahead, Mauro. Yeah, she, because she, uh, she was, uh, um, she used the term relativity. Okay, well, it, it sounds like she invented the term. The term, yeah, yes. Yeah, so she created it. She invented mm -hmm. the term radioactivity. The, the term radioactivity, <laughs> yes, okay. Wow. Good. <laughs> and someone and, uh, else, yeah. another one of the first? I, I'd like to try and get as much participation from everybody. Just turn on and, your uh, microphone. She was, uh, yeah. she, uh, she gained uh, first doctorate. Uh, okay, doctorate. A, a doctorate uh, of science. Uh, okay, as so, a woman. So the first woman in Europe to yes. receive a PhD. Okay, yes. excellent. What else? The first she woman to win. Yeah. Sorry, I'm praying. I'm praying. The first woman to win a Nobel Prize for physics. Uh, for, for physics. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, great. And, and why did they win that prize? Because of uh, the discovery of radioactivity. Well, they discovered radioactivity. I mean, what kind of... Uh, that's just an amazing discovery. They discovered radioactivity. Wow. And one more first. First poll to receive a Nobel Prize. Yeah, and so what does that mean? 
maybe chemistry and physics, uh, different uh, fields. Okay, but, sorry, yeah? Please, uh, a little bit more information, please. Uh, she won a uh, first person. Uh, from Poland. Uh, from Poland. Yes. To ever win a Nobel Prize. Okay, great. So the first person from Poland to win a Nobel Prize was her. All right, great. So let's keep going here because it doesn't stop. <laughs> and so uh, let's go to Michele. Here I am. Yeah, from Italy. Yes, of course. We have another <laughs> Italian. Please, go ahead. She was also the first female lecturer, professor, and head of laboratory at the Sorbonne University in Paris, 1906. In 1911, she won an unprecedented second Nobel Prize, this time in chemistry, for her discovery and isolation of pure radium and radium components. She was the first person ever to receive two Nobel Prizes. She was the first modern Nobel Prize laureate of daughter Nobel Prize laureate. Her oldest daughter, Irene Joliot Curie, also won a Nobel Prize for chemistry in 1935. Okay, so let's let's hold family. on here. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> hold on here. It, it's, okay, so first of all, she was the first professor uh, and and lecturer at uh, at a university in Paris. Now, but what's what's this one? What happened in 1911? Someone else, please. Uh, what what happened? I think they mean yes. They she could uh, obtain the purest radium. Not like the purest, maybe not one hundred percent or less. I don't know, but sure. I think mm -hmm. they mean isolation of pure. I think they mean yes, like good. to gain, good, good. To obtain. Pure. And the pronunci good. The pronunciation is isolation, and so great. And but what's what's special about what happened? I think she is the first one who do, who does this. Uh, who did the second this. one? No. Problem. Well, but sorry, uh, I'm. This is where I'm not. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thank you, Servit, but uh, who else wanted to make a comment? Who was speaking there? The second person? Hello, please go ahead. <laughs> Some, she, uh, yes? she was the first mother uh, to Nobel Prize. Oh, okay. For example, no, her uh, daughters uh, won Nobel Prizes too. Okay, so she's the first mother Nobel Prize winner to have a daughter who won a Nobel Prize. <laughs> okay, so that's that's pretty amazing. I wonder how many father and son combinations there are, but she was a mother and daughter Nobel Prize winning, uh, sorry, combination. But what's the information here? This is incredible, isn't it? If is this true? Yes, yes, uh, yes. chemistry and physics. Person. Yeah, but Received hold on. Yeah. Oh, okay, but what is it? She's the first person in history, man or woman, that received that received two Nobel prizes. Okay, is that true? Because if it is, that's incredible. So not only is she a woman, but she's the first uh, person ever in the world to receive two Nobel prizes. I don't know. Maybe that's not true, but uh, if it is, it's incredible. All right, and so we just have one more little bit to read here. And so, uh, Rafael, are you there? Yes. Uh, where are you connecting from? I'm from Brazil. Okay, welcome. Could you please read this for us? She's the first woman. Please. Uh, she's the first woman which has been led to, to rest under the famous dome of the Pento in Paris for her own merits. I continue? Yeah, yeah. Mm. She, was, she was a truly remarkable figure in the history of science. Okay, great. Now, laid to rest means that she was buried. Uh, her remains, her body, uh, but I, I think there were actually ashes were put under the dome of the Pantheon in Paris for her own merits her own work. 
So here she is. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm verb. Oh, yep. The la uh, laid to rest. Laid to rest. What does it mean? It means to be buried. Uh, a person has died, and they are put in a in an area. Now, to bury is the verb usually, which means to be put underground. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And but laid to rest. It, it's not really a phrasal verb. I think it's more like a an expression. Expression. Okay. Yeah. But but perhaps it is. But uh, laid to rest means to be buried. Uh, their remains have been placed somewhere. So here she is working in the library. Uh, sorry, in the laboratory. And yeah, let's. Uh, sorry, I had pictures of this. <laughs> I didn't. I put them in the wrong spot. Sorry. Oh my goodness, it's right at the end. <laughs> Where are they? No, my pictures done? are gone. Sorry, I, no, I, I had pictures famous of done. this place. Sorry? The famous dome. Yeah, the dome. Pinto. Yeah, the but dome. I, I had pictures of it here. Uh, but where are they? Mm. Well, I, I lost them, so sorry. Uh, we'll, we'll see them later. It, it's a famous building. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought they were close. Let's keep going. Sediment, could you please read this for us? Maria Sklodowska was born as the fifth and youngest child of Bronislava Boguska, a pioneer singer and teacher, and Ladislav Skolski, a professor of mathematics, and physics. From childhood, she was remarkable for her prodigious memory. Prodigious? Prodigious memory. Because her father, a teacher of mathematics and physics, lost his savings through bad investment. She had to take work as a teacher and at the same time look, took part clandestinely in the nationals. Nationalist Free University, reading in Polish to women workers. At the age of 18, she took a post as governess where she suffered an unhappy love affair. From her earnings, she was able to finance her sister Bronia's medical studies in Paris. On the understanding that Bronia would in turn later help her to get an education. Okay, great. And so just uh, some... Uh, who was her father? What did he do? Uh, I think he, he's a he teacher. Was, huh? Yeah, okay. He and more specifically? Professor. Of? Mathematics and physics. Okay, so that, that makes sense. All right, and um, uh, her mother, what was she like? A singer and teacher. Yeah, so a musician, a singer, a teacher, so yeah, very creative person. All right, and then so uh, uh, what she had to work when she was young. Yeah, because he, his father lost the their money. Yes, her, her father mm -hmm. her lost father. All, all his money. Okay, that's unfortunate. So she worked as a teacher. And she also per participated clandestinely, which means secretly, uh, in a hidden way, in a, in a sort of a, a nationalist free university. I, I, I don't know the politics of, of Poland, but helping to educate Polish uh, women workers. All right, a governess, I think, is someone who looks after children and teaches children for a family. Okay, and who is her sister? Uh, so, uh, Bronia. Uh, Bronia. Yes, and what about her? I think she She's took education in was... medical things, like. Uh, okay, so sorry, and pray. She was a doctor. Yeah, she, she became she a doctor. Studying. Okay, and uh, and 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 so great. She she studied medicine in Paris. And uh, she went to school because of the financial support from uh, Marie working. She 
she sent her sister to medical school. All right, great. So let's keep going. And just if people are talking, I love it. But please, if everyone could keep their microphones uh, muted, please. We actually hear somebody breathing in the background. So, uh, And then uh, let me see. Um, Servet, you just finished reading, correct? Yes. Okay, good. And so I'm going to go and say hello to Umi. Are you there? Umi, why? Why? Umi? No? Okay. Yes. So, yes, hello. Where, where uh, are you coming from? I'm from Uzbekistan. Okay, welcome. Could you please read this for us? Okay. Where I st uh, start? Yeah, it, yeah, it begins in 1891. Oh. In 1891, Maria Sklodowska went to Paris where she met physics physics physicists <laughs> a physicist <laughs> that's a tough one met um, physicists who were already well known Slovatska worked for far 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 into the night in her students dorm room and virtu uh, vir vir virtually 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 lived lived on bread and butter and tea she came first in the license of uh, she came first in the license of physical science sciences Sciences, right? Yes, sciences. Sciences in uh, 1893. She began to work in a research lab laboratory, I, I it laboratory. laboratory and in 1894 was placed second in the license of mathematical mathematical sciences. Okay, and I'm going to get you to stop there. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and and let's let's review this. So sorry, physicists, physicists. <laughs> okay, I think there are four S's there. Uh, and so what if people could just repeat? Uh, some of the other students and uh, let's get some participation from everybody here. I, I haven't Physicists. heard from Bain. Yeah. Physicists. Physicists. <laughs> Physicists. Physicists. <laughs> All right, great. Physicists. And, and so, what about the information in this paragraph? She Could started somebody... to work. Sorry, Amprey. She... She started to to work uh, in in the in the rooms. Um, even she didn't have good food to survive. Yeah. Okay. So well, I mean, she went to university and and then worked very hard as a university student, surviving, working all night, surviving on <laughs> bread, butter, and tea. <laughs> okay. Right, so very, very hard working student. And can help me out with some more information, please, because there's, there's great information here. It's a little difficult to understand. She came first uh, in the lessons of physical science. Yeah, okay, so she was student number one, correct? Yes, yeah. yes. The best student. In physical sciences. Is it okay. correct? She was the first of uh, his promotion. Her her uh, her year, uh, her class. She was the top student. Yeah. But then, what about 1894? Uh, the second uh, first person for mathematical science. Okay, so she was second. She placed second in mathematics. 
So what a brilliant student. What an yes. amazingly talented student and obviously yes. very hard working. Yeah, okay. she, she, she was studying two careers at the same time. Yeah, uh, she did this all in, it looks like, four years, three or four years. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And in Paris, I guess this was a perfect place for her because she started to meet other physicists, well, physicists who were well-known, famous. Okay, so great. So this is, and she started working in, and just quickly, I'm Canadian, so I say laboratory. So I do not pronounce this O syllable. Labra, laboratory, laboratory. Other people say lab <coughs> laboratory. Yeah, either pronunciation is correct. And then she met the love of her life, Pierre, <laughs> in the spring. So here she is. Okay, great. And so, uh, oh, let, let's skip that. It's not important. And here's Pierre, the love of her life, I guess, and her co-worker. Uh, they work together. And so let's read about this. Uh, and so, Ampre, could you read this for us, please? Okay. Their marriage, July 25th, uh, 25th 1895, marked the start of a partnership that was soon to achieve results of world significance. In particular, the discovery of Polonia. So Sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. Go ahead when you can. So called by Maria in honor of Poland. In the summer of 1898, and that of Wayun a few months later. Following Henry Becquerel's di discovery, 1896, of a new phenomenon, which he later called radioactivity, Mary Curie, looking for a subject for a thesis, decided to find out if the property discovered in uranium was to be found in other mother. She discovered that this was true for thorium. Okay, so absolutely the pioneering scientists who studied radioactivity. Thorium, uranium, uh, I, I, we hear a lot about uranium. I think it's used in nuclear energy mm -hmm. and I've never really heard of polonium but then uh, I think that uh, radium is quite popular, uh, quite well known. All right, so great. So obviously, this work, uh, along with her husband and the other scientist, won them the Nobel Prize. Okay, and so I'd like to go to back to Hamid. Could you read yes. this for us, please? Okay. Turning to materials. Turning to min uh, min minerals, hmm. her attention was drawn to a uh, pitch plant, a mineral whose activity superior to that of pure uranium could only be explained by the presence in the ore of small quantities of an unknown, unknown substance of very high activity. Pierre Curie then joined her in the work that she had undertaken to resolve this problem, and that led uh, to the discovery of the new elements, polonium and rhodium. Radium. Radium. While, radium. Mm -hmm. uh, while Pierre Curie uh, devoted himself chiefly to the uh, physical study of the new radiations, Marie Curie struggled to obtain pure radium in the metallic state. On the results of this research, Maria Curie received her doctorate of science in June 1903. In uh, 1903, they shared with uh, Becquerel the Nobel Prize for Physics for the discovery of ra uh, radioactivity. Radio. Radioactivity. Radioactivity. Great. Radium. Radium. Okay, and yeah, all right, let's 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 go back. And so, and sorry, you were correct. Thank you for correcting me. Minerals, minerals. Minerals. Okay, great. And so this was sort of the research work that led them to discover radioactivity. 
Okay, and so the, it's her life continues. Ismail, could you read this for us? The birth of her two daughters, Elaine and Eve, in 1897 and 1904, didn't interrupt Maria's intensive scientific work. She was appointed lecturer in physics at the École Normale yeah. Supérieure for Girls in Cerf, 19... And oh, we, say, we, we say 1900? 1900, and introduced the method of teaching based on experimental demonstrations. In December 1904, she was appointed chief assistant in the laboratory directed by Pierre Curie. Okay, great. All right, and uh, this, uh, all of this is French. Um, the the main names and uh, so what what can we say here oh and just quickly in English if this is a woman's name I Irene Irene, Irene. and so what what do you think what what's could somebody repeat the information that's in this paragraph she had two kids okay but good it didn't stop her uh, in uh, inventing new things. Okay. Uh, I think she got other things about experimental demonstrations, but I don't know what it is. So yeah, well, after it, this... Sorry, I wanted to repeat this because I, I found it interesting where she, she created a new way of teaching. Uh, she introduced uh, a method of teaching based on experimental demonstrations. That sounds like a really innovative way of teaching, a really great way of teaching. So, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. She got a job in Pierre Curie's laboratory. Okay, and, and sorry, not just a job, but, well, Chief okay. Assistant. Chief assistant. Yeah. Okay. Great. And Jeff, uh, maybe yes. uh, her daughters uh, were, birth, were born not uh, in a laboratory. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. Well, I wonder if they were if they uh, were exposed to radiation. <laughs> I, uh, I I'm surprised that she lived she lived long and and was healthy and and had healthy children. It just seems so very dangerous that she was working with radioactivity. So, uh, Mauro, could you please read this before? Oh yes, go ahead, share it. Uh, by like experimental demonstration, they mean like uh -huh. laboratory things not, instead of theoretical teaching. Exactly. System. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and this is this is I think what a fantastic way to teach science is to l allow the students to do experiments that demonstrate the information, as <laughs> opposed to just reading books or listening to a lecture. And so, not only she was the first professor in that school, but it sounds like she was a very innovative teacher. Yeah. Excellent, innovative teacher. All right, and uh, so, um, uh, Mauro, could you read this, please? Okay. The sudden, the, <clears throat> the sudden death of Pierre Curie, April 19... In 1906, was a bitter blow to Maria Carey, but it was a healthful and a decisive turning point in her career. As and forth, she was to devote all her energy to completing along the shine, scientific, no, Sci science, scientific, scientific, mm -hmm. scientific work that they had under taken. On May 13, 1906, she was appointed to the professorship that had been left back and on her husband's death. She was the first woman to teach in the Sorbonne. Okay, sorry, I'm going to get you to stop there. Thank yeah. you. And so Thank let's... Uh, I just wanted to point out that henceforth, 
uh, is one of these transition yeah, words. Henceforth. And it, and it means from then on. So from the death of her husband on into the future. Henceforth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, all right. Her husband died. It was very painful. But she was determined to devote all of her energy to complete the research that they had started. They undertook, they started this research. Okay, and so she took his place as a professor. What does undertake? To undertake means to begin, to start. Hmm. Yeah, they started that research. They okay. began that scientific work. And so she was determined to complete it herself alone. <laughs> yeah. All right. And so let's let's continue here. Uh, if I could get uh, yeah, Servit, could you please yes. read this for us? Uh, in 1910, her fundamental thesis on radioactivity was published. In 1911, she was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for the isolation of pure radium. In 1914, she saw the com completion of the building of the laboratories of the Radium Institute at the University of Paris. Okay, right. And so uh, a whole scientific institute studying, uh, I guess, radioactivity. Okay. Winning her second Nobel Prize. Okay, could you continue a little bit, please, Servet? Yes. Throughout World War I, Maria Curie, with the help of her daughter, Irene, devoted herself to the development of the use of X radiography. In 1918, the Radium Institute, the staff of which Irene has joined, began to operate in earnest, and it was to become a universal center for nuclear physics and chemistry. Okay, so she really worked at the beginning of all of this during World War I with the help of her daughter, Irene, uh, but then in, in French it looks like it has a different... And her last name, Curie, I think is how I have heard it pronounced. Okay. So uh, radiography, X radiography, I, I'm not sure if that's correct, but nuclear physics, all of that. The first, obviously, after the discovery of it, you're going to begin all of the scientific investigation. And Umi, could you please read this for us? Yes. <clears throat> Maria Curie, now at the um, highest highest point of her fame and from uh, 1922 <clears throat> a member of the Ac Academy of Medi Medi Medicine Med medicine medicine uh, devoted de devoted 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 her um, researches to the study of the chemistry of radioactive radioactive sub substances, substances substances and the medical applica application applications of this sub substance substances. substances substances and uh, in English this word chemistry uh, uh, CH has different pronunciations so in this situation it's pronounced as K chemistry okay sorry chemistry. so uh, and who is this her can you read this Umi yeah yeah it's her daughter yes Irene and can you read um, the text at the bottom Umi um, it, it may not be possible but okay parents one uh, parents won the uh, 1803 no Nobel Prize in f physics 
Um, mother won the 1911 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Goes uh, goes ahead and wins another Nobel Prize in uh, 1935. Okay, great. <laughs> and so 1903, 1911, and 1935. So what an amazing woman uh, from an amazing a, family. And Jeff, uh, what a wonderful yeah. scientific family. Yes. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe one of the greatest. Who knows? Uh, that's pretty amazing. Okay, and so let's, let's continue. Uh, and we're back to Ampre. Could you please read this for us? In 1921, accompanied by her two daughters, Mary Curie made a triumphant journey to the United States, where President Robin G. Harding presented her with a gram of radium bought, bought as, the, as the result of a collation among American women. She gave lectures, especially in Belgium, Brazil, Spain, and Czechoslovakia. She was made a member of the International Commission of Intellectual Cooperation by the Council of the League of Nations. Okay, great. So I think the Council of the League of Nations was the original United Nations. And so uh, a key person in intellectual cooperation, um, whatever that was. What was the gift that the President of the United States gave her? <laughs> A gram of radium? Yeah, okay, so a gram of this element, radium. Yeah. And why why was it special? Uh, because was special uh, she, discovered, she discovered... She discovered it. Okay, great, yes. And she discovered how she to isolate it. Isolate, yeah. But, but this element. Did, did the president pay for it? Did the United States, was it a gift from the United States government? Anyone? Can you uh, ask again, please? Yes. Was it a gift from the American government? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, it wasn't. A collection? I know. Oh, it was a, the uh, American women. It was bought. It yeah. was collected. Yeah. From, they collected money. Money. Mm -hmm. And um, a group, well, I mean... Uh, uh, a group of American women, women women donated money to buy her this gift mm -hmm. for her research. So pretty amazing. And look at all the traveling she did. Um, Europe, South America, North America. Wow, great. All a right. gram of radium is so expensive then. Well, I, I would think that it would be very expensive, yes. I, I don't know. And, and now, of course, all of those kinds of materials are controlled. But uh, let, let's keep going. And so uh, we're, we're back to you, Hamid, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition... In addition, she had the satisfaction of seeing the Curie Foundation in Paris uh, develop and uh, the in inauguration. inauguration in 1932 in Warsaw of the Radium Institute, of which her sister, uh, Bronya, became di uh, director. On July 4, 1934, near Salinches, France, Maria Sklodowska Curie died of uh, leukemia. Leukemia. Leukemia, which had been uh, caused by her exposure to the radium that made her famous. Okay. Recognizing uh, Maria Sklodowska Curie with uh, perhaps its highest uh, posthumous honor in 1995, the French government transferred her ashes together with those of Pierre to the Pant uh, Pant Pantheon, Pantheon. Pantheon in Paris, making her the only woman to be recognized in this way for 
all of them achievements. Okay, great. And so in 1995, the government moved her ashes along with her husband's ashes to this place. And uh, under the dome, this is the dome here at the top. And so this is the building here. So she's the only woman to be laid to rest in this building uh, due to her own merits. Perhaps another woman because she was the a queen or because of her husband. But yeah. All right. And so great job, everybody. Well done with your pronunciation, etc. And um, decoding all the information. So really, one of it's an incredible story, and so what I'd like to do is is to get some some comments from people. So, uh, Ismail, do do you have a comment? Yes, Jeff. I didn't know uh, very much about Madame Curie. I heard before, but uh, and it was uh, very interesting for me. But uh, it's a sad story. He found the radioactivity, and he was died, dying uh, from she a ended illness, up dying. which is mm -hmm. which is caused by uh, the radium element. Right. Uh, leukemia. Leukemia is the is my pronunciation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It is a sad story, but she lived long enough to see a lot of her successes. And and sorry, I'm just going to get a quick comment from the people who participated in the class. Uh, Mauro. Hello, Mauro. Are you there? Okay, we, we don't hear from you. So, Servet, could you give us a, a, a comment, your reaction to the to her story? Yeah, I think it's interesting and it's a very good. I'm personally interested in science. I find all kind of science good. I, so, it's good probably she did. Uh, she was happy. She, she was proud of her job because if I were in her shoes, I would be. <laughs> no, but this is good. This is good grammar. Please go ahead. I love these statements. Yeah, this. I think this. That's it. Uh, well, no, no. Sorry. If I had been her, or it's hard to say if I were her, be because she's dead. So mm. yeah, if, Well, yeah. I mean, you can say it, but if, if I had been her, if I had been her. Mm. What? I would have. Good. Been I would proud. have. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I I would have been proud of myself. Yeah. Uh, okay. Great. Excellent. Good job. Good job. I love that. Uh, and uh, and Umi, uh, a comment from you. Yes. Um, my English very poor. It's okay. I will help you. I, I, I don't understand more this history. The story? Okay. Story. But she is famous? She is a famous person? Um, what famous? Oh, okay, sorry. She is <laughs> a celebrity. Uh, she is very well known. Mm. An important person. I don't know. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to uh, go ahead now. Uh, sorry, I just I need to correct my sentence. So, Servet, uh, and now there it is. If I had been her, I would have been proud. Sorry, the first sentence is wrong. Uh, Ampre, do you have a comment for us? Yes, a, a great woman with a high IQ. Mm -hmm. I probably we need uh, some kind of woman, women now, in order to discover what uh, leukemia uh, is caused. And it's um, maybe if 
she was uh, alive, she she could uh, discover the cause of the leukemia. Oh, right. <laughs> that so killed if, her. If killed she her. had lived, yes, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, no, great. Excellent, good work. Advanced grammar, I love it. And uh, sorry, we're losing some of the new students. I, I don't want you to go. Uh, Jose uh, Caro, please stay here. Uh, but I, I wanted to get Hamid. Uh, do you have a surprise for us? Yes, uh, I also make a comment. Okay. Uh, Marie Curie uh, was born in a scientific environment, mm -hmm. and uh, she uh, lived in scientific environment, and she died for sci uh, science. Right. Yes. Yeah. She gave her life to a science investigation. And, uh, and she she uh, left uh, her uh, works to her daughters, and uh, she uh, gave some advices her daughters, and uh, they uh, they advanced the science. Yes. They continued her work. Yes. Because it sounds like the other daughter who became a doctor got involved with using nuclear chemistry and nuclear physics for medicine. Yes. Uh, yes. My, and uh, my surprise is uh, I think uh, for advertisements uh, for the World Chemistry Day uh, for six years and I will show my all uh, advertisements and today I prepared uh, my first English uh, version advertisement. Okay. All I right. will show them. Yes, good. You're going to use the share screen? Yes. Okay. Everybody see? Okay, I'm going to click on it. So, can people see that? Now, Everybody what, see? What language is this? I can see it. Yes, it is Turkish, uh, but. It is my first uh, advertisement, and uh, I put and uh, for my university uh, university. Uh, how can I say university board? Yeah. Okay. And oh, uh, on a on a notice board. Yes. Okay. And uh, this is second. Okay. Great. And this is uh, third. All right. And this is uh, fourth, and you can see chemistry uh, one one hundred anniversary uh, okay. top of the left, and uh, this is uh, last year. So these are notices uh, advertising the fact that uh, April seventh is World Chemistry Day. Yes, I also mm -hmm. uh, printed and uh, put the notice board. For uh, everybody. Okay. Good job. And uh, and this is my uh, I prepared it uh, in today. Okay, sounds good. All right, so you have some pictures of the famous chemists. Yes, and okay. I like a colorful chemistry life, so uh, you can see colorful chemicals. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. 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 Excellent. And I and I put uh, first. Uh, elements, fire, earth, water, and air, uh, you can see uh, uh, down off the bottom. Okay, right. So, earth, earth, yes. fire, water, and air. Okay, yes. yeah, great. All right, great. And, and thank uh, you. And I want to uh, read my uh, a little bit uh, poem. Okay, good. Uh, a member of the chemistry department. If you are uh, alone, you elect your own vote for yourself. They should be the most beautiful and better circumstances. What is the reason for everything? You can ask yourself to be liked and taught chemistry for all people. All right, great, great. Okay. Uh, this poem's uh, study is uh, uh, I I was a member uh, for chemistry uh, field uh, my bachelor bachelor term 
uh, but your bachelor's I can, degree I could, in chemistry? Yes, uh, I could not be a manager or I could not be a president for a student, but uh, I wrote uh, this uh, poem, uh, Propaganda for Me. Okay, for, for promotion, yeah, for advertising. Promotion for me. <laughs> great, excellent, great, excellent, thank you. And uh, we're, we're down to the last minute. I just wanted to say hello to Jose. We've kind of been ignoring you. Hello, Jose. Where are you connecting from? Uh, I'm connecting from Spain. From where? Sorry? Spain. Uh, from Spain. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, uh, you go to school? Yeah, well, I, I go to the college. This is my first year. Yeah, uh, your first year of university? And what are you studying? Audiovisual and multimedia. Oh, great. Okay. So, yeah, good. And did you enjoy studying science when you were in high school? Well, not too much. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, great. And so welcome. Uh, uh, and so I'm, I'm going to end the class, but three cheers for... Uh, Hamid, <laughs> for Thank <you>. his participation, <laughs> and this is what I need. Um, to learn English, you need to read about things that are interesting. You need to listen to things that you find interesting and valuable. You need to watch videos about subjects that you find interesting and valuable. So come and, to my uh, Facebook page yeah. and tell me what you're interested about. Very specific information. Okay. Send okay. me links. Uh, okay. And I can create class materials for everybody to use because that lesson was awesome. That is an amazing story. And, um, you know, I think France deserves credit for being a country that allowed both men and women to develop uh, scientific knowledge at that time during and, World War I. Yeah, so. And it is an uh, inspiration story for everybody. Yeah, an inspiring, an inspiring story for everybody. So choose your passion and work hard to uh, achieve those results. So bye, everybody. Uh, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, see you. Great work, everybody.